So a bridge started out as it's always started out as a, co a collaboration, and it's quite funny. I know Annie from Hedgebrook, which is a um, writers' residence for women writers who work around social change or write around social change, and we met there a few years ago. Um, and while we're here, we had an alumni meeting. When we were back here, we had an alumni meeting, so we met some other writers who had been to Hedgebrook at other times. And I'm giving you a long-winded introduction because this is how we came to the book. Because I'm friends with Maya Katia Fogel, who is the publisher of the book, and Pyrene Press, and she sent out a Facebook message call out looking for creative writers to go to Calais and interview people, but do something creative with it. So write different stories rather than journalistic stories. And it was the height of last summer when um, there was really an onslaught of media coverage and quite questionable sometimes in the terms of the narratives that were constructed and especially the words that were used. Um, because I knew that Annie was, had done a lot of work in, around oral history, I forwarded the call out to her. And from that we got talking and we proposed to Mike to do it as a joint project. And we're going to talk a bit about the proposal. No? Right. So we, d we talked a lot about how we wanted to approach it and how it would be, for me, different from, from doing oral narratives and having the freedom of fiction, but also being inspired by and based on interviews and experiences in Calais. And we decided on the name Breach because there'd been all this talk about, um, what was the word? Swarming. And, and flooding. And flooding. And this whole idea of um, Britain as an island with a moat around, impregnable and all that. And we wanted the idea of breaking through the breach, mm. but also the sense of, um, breaking rules and breaking promises and breaking, um, failing to honor conventions around human rights and failing to live up to um, undertakings around people's safety and safe passage. And then a third meaning of breach of a whale breaking through the water, something new rising. So we thought, I'm sure nobody thought of those three things when they saw the <laughs> word, but we like to think of those three things. Um, and that was our, our sort of cons concept of going there. We had a particular set of ideas about why we would, um, how we would approach it, not in terms of writing style, but we know each other quite well and we know we have a sort of shared sensibility and politics around where we stand on the issue and how stories could bring a new idea of what was happening in Calais and who was there and why um, in a way that was different from all the very important and necessary but um, the journalistic tech. So I was the first to go and I went uh, with some friends or acquaintances, I actually didn't know them, acquaintances of Annie as a volunteer which was a great experience. So it was people who had loaded up um, vans and minivans and they drove in convoy over there to the warehouse. There's a warehouse, I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, the camp in Cali and it is the jungle that people call the jungle by the way if you're wondering. And it was a great experience. So I came with this quite dedicated people who had followed it in a different way than I had until then. And I spent a day giving out stuff and giving out donations. And that's why it was my introduction to the, to the camp. And then we started interviewing. And because it's, Annie will say a bit more about that, but because it's quite unorganized, or let's, let me say it is very organized there, but it's volunteer organizations that are working rather than big NGOs. So there wasn't really anyone to approach. So you, I just arrived, I had a few numbers to call, random people, but I just started chatting to mostly guys because it's a lot of men there, much more, more men than women. And yeah, I started the interview process. I should say I don't have a background in taking formal interviews. And I knew that as well, but in my work, I always work very research driven and I usually go to places. I've written a novel um, that's coming out next year. So I went to the Niger Delta, for instance, to research that one. It's not very different from how I usually work. And I often also do interviews, but I do that differently to people who work in documentary. So, so my, from my background, I 
I'm like really old school with a crew and everything from a hundred years ago. And I go into a community and meet people through someone they trust. I would never just walk in and just talk. I would always make sure that I'm, I go to the leader of the community or I would have some get authority somehow and mm. there would be some basis that people would understand why what I'm doing is anything to do with them and why they should cooperate with me or be part of it. So Ola was saying from her point of view and she's a great hanger out and everybody wants to talk to Ola. Mm. So it's, she's just chatting and I was like, no, I can't work like that. I must speak to Médecin du Monde and I must arrange things and I must do all the correct things. And she said, no, you can just talk. I said, no, no, it's not possible. And then I arrived and I just started talking to people. It's a completely different um, environment and then also a very different process for me because I've written fiction on the one hand and then these oral narratives where we... Um, two books of oral narratives, one on migrants in the US and one on um, the Zimbabwe situation in 2008. And that, for a publisher in the US, that has a very set, voice of witness it's called, has a very particular style and, and approach. So you do long, long interviews and transcribe, and then we try to sort of carve them into good stories, but holding very true to the, to the words that people said. And I, in one of my interviews, I did that in Calais, and that gave me the biggest headache, and I'm only just getting through it because I was so entranced by his voice and his language and his story that it was really hard to let go of that um, and do what we realized we had to do, which is create very create rounded characters. The, the testimony or the story that people want to tell you when you get there, which makes complete sense, is that where they've come from, how their, what their steps were and why they need something different which makes, you know, it's obviously that's what's in people's minds. But, and that's what comes through a lot, I think, in the media. So it's just to find, to start by telling stories, putting a character on the page.